Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So I was given these two older style CRT TVs from a friend. He told me that they were beyond repair and I could scrap them, so thank you for that. Shout out to Ray. The nice thing about all CRT TVs is that they are 100% scrappable. I could bring these in as is and get e-waste weight price, which is about five cents a pound. This smaller one here weighs about 25 pounds. This larger one here weighs 45 pounds. So that is great that I can still get something from doing nothing. However, CR TVs are a great source of scrappable material inside. They always have a really nice copper yoke that's gonna be number two copper, as well as a nice copper degaussing cable that goes around the tube, as well as other metals. So very easy to take apart. Gonna show you how to do that and how to identify the metals. The other great thing about these is once I do take out the copper yoke and the degaussing cable as other items, I can still close it up and bring it into the scrapyard and get e-waste price for the remainder parts of the CRT TV. So again, they are 100% scrappable, which is awesome. The other thing I do want to mention, especially these two TVs being older, this one is from 1981 which is before I was born. This one is actually 1987. And these, if they were in good workable condition, if I, if I found them on the street, I could also look to sell parts. People are looking for parts for their vintage TV sets and other uh, antiques and items. So that's definitely an avenue you wanna go before you start breaking it all apart. Um, so make sure you do look at that as well. But for a scrapper's perspective, which I'm looking at here, again, going to start taking things and identifying it for you. So here we go. I'm gonna start with this one. For the sake of this video, I have already gone ahead and removed the screws from the back. I do keep the screws obviously for later because once I open it, I'm gonna use these screws to close it back up. Um, so here is the back panel. I'm gonna just cut this cord right here as close as I can. So this obviously, if I was to bring this, put this in the trash, uh, it's gonna go there. This is non-recyclable. But again, if I close it up, it will count as some weight on the scrap. Here you can see your TV. Here is my beautiful copper yoke here. Uh, I do also wanna start with this appliance wire here. Here is obviously a great appliance wire. This is gonna be classified as 60% appliance wire and is currently going for $2.10 a pound. As you can see inside, if I put it up to the camera, those are two individual strands of copper that have one coating of plastic on it. Because there is higher copper recovery here, less plastic, this is a higher value. So again, 60% appliance wire. It does also have brass prongs on it. Some people will leave them on for the weight. Some people take them off. I do take them off. I have a brass bin. Brass right now is going for about $3.50. Um, I do have a large jar of it, so it does add up. Um, the difference between this appliance wire is that some of your wire is going to be 60% like this and something like this, which will go for 40% appliance wire. This is a wire off of a microwave. And you can notice here, there are three individual strands of copper that have plastic around it, as well as an outer coating of plastic. Because this has higher plastic, less copper recovery, this is your 40% appliance wire, and this is going for about $1.22 a pound. So definitely want to make sure that I separate it. Um, there's not a pound here in my TV, but again, I just put it into a bag. Word of caution, make sure you sort it as you are going along. Last thing you want to do when you go to the scrapyard is spend all your time separating the cords. Uh, if you have them all in one bin, the scrapyards will not take the time to separate it for you. They will give you the lower price. So definitely want to make sure you do that. So beautiful appliance wire here. This first thing I need to do before I start playing with any of this is I do need to cut this uh, red cable here that goes from the tube to the circuit board. Um, and that is in case there is any type of shock left over. Because I have now cut it, there is not gonna be a shock. And you know, there are different things you do when it comes to capacitors like microwaves uh, and TVs like this. There are rules. I will leave it unplugged uh, for a couple days to make sure that it reduces any type of charge. I have dealt with 
hundreds of these CRTVs and I've never been um, shocked, but there's always a first for everything. The other thing I definitely make sure I do is when I use my cutters, I have rubberized handles on it. So it also will pre uh, prevent any type of shock or whatever. But now that I've cut this cord, it is easy to handle. Gonna first take this yoke off here. There's always gonna be a small circuit board as well. When I start looking at it, I gotta look at the screw. There's a couple screws that's gonna fasten in this yoke. So gotta take that out. I'm gonna find my screwdriver. I always keep one of these nice different sets beside me because you know you never know what kind of screw you're gonna get. It could be a screw, it could be an Allen bolt, it could be a number of things, but have to make sure that I first take off this clamp, unscrew it, that's the first thing. I cannot take this yoke off. And I have seen some people break the glass tube here to get it off. That is not necessary. Like I said, it's very easy. As you can see, it just took one of the things off. Gonna look, there's always two or one. There you go, very simple. Just gonna cut this to get this wire. You can see a lot more 60% wire there, but there is my beautiful copper yoke. And all I'm gonna do to get that yoke is I'm just gonna smash this plastic off with a hammer. That, as I said, is number two copper and is currently right now going for $4.10. It has gone down about 20 cents from last week, but still it is a great price. I am just gonna make sure for this video, just to show you that it is copper. I'm gonna just scratch it. Okay, especially newer items now, you've gotta scratch. Sometimes it looks like copper, but once you scratch it, it reveals metallic, uh, which would be aluminum. This is, as you can see, is copper. So there we go, some great copper there. And I do have a separate video showing you how to take this apart. Very easy to do. I will include the link to that video underneath. Um, there is some phyrite that goes around because there's two layers of copper. You have the inner two coils right there as well as the outer coil right here. So you definitely want to take all of it off. You do also need to make sure you remove it from the plastic as well as the phyrite to get your number two copper. Okay, inside here, here's my circuit board. Just going to actually pull it up, cut out a couple of these wires just so I can access it. Sometimes it's just finding the coil, the right one, there we go. Okay. And I will later get those rest of the coils out of there, but I just wanna open this to show you okay, the goodies on this one. So if I take this up, you can see right here, this circuit board, this is a beautiful piece of aluminum putting a magnet to it. Here's my magnet. You can see the magnet doesn't stick. So this would be an aluminum heat sink. You can see right there, that bolt right there. That is actually another piece. The black thing there is another piece of number two copper. Uh, and I collect these. These come off of all of your different circuit boards on your aluminum heat sinks. Look at the pile I have here. This is all number two copper. This weighs eight pounds. So number two copper just from your pins that attach to aluminum heat sinks. So awesome, awesome item. So this clean aluminum is gonna give me about 50 cents a pound. I do have to make sure I pull any screws off of it. It's always attached by screws or sometimes little magnetic pins. So you definitely need to crimp those off. There is also on here, if I look at it, a small transformer here. There is gonna be a little bit of copper in here. As well, I have right here in this box, a relay box. Um, and I do, if people have or do micro scrapping, there are other things. These two right here, these are also heat sinks. But if I put a magnet to those, these are aluminum. This one is right here is going to be magnetic. So this is going to be tin. These two aluminum heat sinks, because they are black, um, they are still going to be aluminum, but this would be colored aluminum. It would not be clean. Um, there is definitely different categories, especially when you look at extrusion. There's colored extrusion and bare, which is your metallic color. Okay, so there are definitely a couple more heat sinks on there. And if you turn them over, a lot of times they will either have soldering or screws. Bottom here, there is another piece of uh, tin. Okay, as well, again, going into mag uh, micro scrapping, there is right here a crystal oscillator. There is people that collect these for the silver recovery, as well as your small 
MLCCs. So these little guys right here, uh, if I could take it up to the corner, this orange one right there, you can see this little guy right there. That orange thing there, that's an MLCC. Some people will also collect them as well because they contain palladium in them. Uh, and for me, the rule is uh, that I've heard, if I cut those out and they stick to a magnet, they are not worth uh, taking because they do not have the precious metal. These ones, given the size of this, uh, I'm just gonna try and pull that out. It is a little bit hard to get to right now because I haven't started taking things out of the circuit board. But because these are older, the chance of precious metal is definitely increases. Uh, but again, I'm just gonna try and pull it out. There's one pin that I have to get still. There we go. That out. Just for educational purposes. So again, here is my MLCC. I'm gonna put it in my hand, see if it sticks to the magnet. It does not. Okay, so I separate these. I will put them into a little vial. Um, and again, some people will buy these online uh, and extract the palladium or crush them down to get it. I don't do that, but again, you can always find a buyer, I'm sure, okay? But a great circuit board, as I said, with precious metals. And I will also, I had a viewer ask me if I could do another video showing taking things apart off of uh, circuit boards, how to separate it. So I am gonna keep this for my next video, a uh, great video um, to uh, learn about circuit boards, excellent source of copper and other types of metals. So again, the nice thing about this as well is once I take the goodies off of it, it all adds up. It's going to be the same price as my e-waste. It goes in there. This too would be worth five cents a pound. Okay, so it all adds up. The degaussing cable, I'm looking right now at if this has one. There it is on the bottom. Sometimes you have to find it, look for it, okay? And just gonna get a pry bar, okay? So it will always go around the tube, but again, sometimes they have it right in there. So gotta pull it out. There it is, locating it. This one is actually hidden very well. Okay, so just gotta pry this up. Um, <laughs> Okay, just gonna, there it is, pulling it up, finding it here. I'm gonna just cut it. Where do I put my cutter? There it is. Okay, I'm gonna try and slide it out. Wow, this is in there pretty good. Nice. All right. All right, yeah, I've never actually had one this hard to get out, which is unbelievable but they are always in there. Maybe that's why my dad always says that he can't find them. Okay, I'm gonna have to slide this out, <laughs> working it outwards. Here it comes. Just using leverage, pulling it out of there. There, Whew. This is attached in there. And sometimes you will have to undo the there we go, the two, but you just have to find where it's connected. Sometimes, as I said, it can be stuck, taped on, but just gonna pull this up here. There's the last piece. Okay, but definitely worth my little bit of time. There, whew, that was way in there. So here is my degaussing cable. This goes around the tube and you do wanna make sure you look inside of it. This one, if I cut it, and that's the best way to do it, you can see inside that is copper. If I was to cut this degaussing cable and it would be a metallic look inside, then it would be aluminum. And you will find them aluminum. So definitely need to check. Um, I will actually run this through my wire stripper uh, to get off this outer coating. Very easy to do. Like I said, it's one pass and then all I will do is just lift that wire and I will actually upgrade this from 60% appliance wire to number two. Uh, so that is definitely great. And they are different lengths or thicknesses. So depending on the TV, this bigger one, because it is larger, it will be longer and also thicker. So there we go. The rest of this TV, 
I will leave the speaker in there. There is a little bit of copper in that speaker, but I'm gonna leave that because it would be um, tin price. Um, actually, I might take that out and put it in tin, which is about seven cents a pound. Um, some people will sell those, but given this style and how old it is, I may look online to see if I can sell it. But the rest of this TV, I'm just gonna close back up and I will bring in the rest of it in. Okay, this one, if I take this one apart, same idea, same stuff. I have already removed the backing. Okay, just gonna cut this appliance wire again. Okay, my appliance wire is right here. Okay, so again, another 60% cord. This one you can see actually has brass uh, plugs, the clean brass, yellow brass. Um, they will actually go in the same pile as your coated ones. So there is no difference, but they're both brass. Again, I will take those off. So there's probably gonna be half an ounce right here with these two cords. This one, again, I'm not gonna really take it apart other than you do have some circuit boards here, small ones. There's gonna be some MLCCs. This one, you can see, has copper as well. And this copper is your red color. So if I scratch that, um, it is gonna reveal a copper color underneath. But again, rule of thumb, I do have to cut this so there is no more magnetic charge. Pull this off here. Okay, do not need to cut that or hit this to break the glass. Okay, gonna take that off. Sometimes you can just actually remove these with just screwing it or unscrewing it. There is my bolt right there. Uh, and it's just to release, there is always some glue. So all I'm doing is I turn it just to release it. There's my clamp. Okay, slide this hopefully right off if there is a clamp. There is a small little clamp that I have to break here just to get over. Okay, but you can see that it does turn. Okay, and I will pull that off. Uh, I just gotta get that lip and pull that off. Okay, but what I wanted to show is, <laughs> again, the difference. There is a lot of similarity, obviously, with these TVs, okay? But it's just a couple different screws. These screws, I'm gonna just put into my tin. So screws are another great item for tin, okay? The circuit board, I'm looking at the circuit board. Same idea, has some LC, or, uh, MLCCs on it. It does have a small capacitor that I'm looking at, an aluminum capacitor. I am gonna show that in a second. Okay, so just give me a second. Pick that up. There we go. Okay, so there's my little security latch. Here is a bunch of more 60% wire. Okay, and as I said, I've already scratched this. So just because it's red, look at that nice scratch line that does reveal aluminum. So another copper yoke. And it does actually have two colors. Look at that. You got the different shades. So scratch test is the best. I always call these money bells. So they're copper yokes. Um, here right here, if I put this to the camera, there is a capacitor right there that you can kind of see. Okay. I don't open these. I will bring them in. Some people will open capacitors to take off the coating. This is going to be aluminum, the outer coating. But for me, I don't open them because there is oil inside of them. Um, so it is up to you. I will just bring them in and get capacitor weight. Okay. The degaussing cable, you can see right here. Just pull it up. I'm probably going to have to do some breakage because there is a small tin layer. Okay. But I'm just going to cut this just to show you a piece of it because I have to now get into it. But I'm going to just open this just to show you, compare the difference. Okay, there is a piece of degaussing cable inside of it. Here again, I, it reveals there's a piece of it. It's recognizable. It's got the tape around it. And I could probably actually even just unroll this tape, but this will go around the whole thing. As I said, there is a coating of tin around this yoke. Um, don't know why the manufacturer did that. They all obviously depend on where they're made or age, 
But once I remove that, then I will get the rest of this degaussing cable. But as you can see, difference between the two sizes, okay? This one, as I said, is thicker because it's a larger one. It's longer, but definitely make sure you cut inside of it. It does not reveal the metallic look. So this is number two copper once I remove the outer coating. If I left this on, then I can just throw this right into my 60% appliance. So it's up to you if you have a wire stripper or you don't even have to. I've also tried it just using an X-Acto knife and I will just cut down one side and then I could just peel it off. So it's very easy to do to upgrade it. Um, but again, when we look at scrapping, it all depends on time, effort, okay? So two really nice older style CRTVs. I do have a video on more of a modern CRTV uh, from the 90s. So I will also include that in the link. Um, this is obviously just a vintage one. Wanted to show these because uh, of, you know, education purposes as well as rarity. Um, as I said, I don't come across a lot of TVs from the early 80s anymore, but definitely some great copper. So great thing about these two, as I said, if they are in workable condition, you can sell parts online. If they don't, then you definitely 100% scrappable, but you want to make sure you get out that copper and other items out of there before you bring it into the scrapyard. So great pieces of scrap, as I said. Going to close this up, get my e-waste price for the rest of it. I've got my two beautiful copper yokes, as well as the degaussing cable that I've gotten out of there. So great source of number two copper. Copper is our scrapper's gold. Please continue to comment. Thank you again to my friend for these, vid these TVs. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.